So let's dive into the new paper, right? I think the paper title, I know that probably it will change. So it's a, more about uh, developer experience, what actually drives productivity and how to measure it. So maybe a little bit of intro in the beginning. What is this paper about? What is your findings, your insights? So maybe yeah, either one of you can chip in here. The reason we decided to write this paper was to really build on the work we did in our initial research paper. In that initial research paper, we defined what developer experience is and what it's really made up of and what it looks like in organizations and why it's such a challenge for them to actually improve it. With this paper, we wanted to create a resource that was more practical, something that could easily be applied by leaders and organizations. And this paper really encapsulates both the research findings from our initial paper, as well as the experiences we've now had working with many organizations and partnering with them to help them understand and improve developer experience. And so this paper builds on our experiences and research to hopefully provide a framework or set of frameworks that organizations can go ahead and apply to start measuring developer experience and also start improving developer experience within their organizations. Yeah, to me, I think the key behind this paper, the first paper was really about understanding the factors that impacted a developer experience and also teased out a lot of contextual characteristics, how senior a developer is and what kind of size team they're working in and their level of management, all of these things that affect how different factors may play a role in their experience. And we also, from that work, identified barriers and coping strategies that developers would use. And the original framework was intended to be quite actionable because it did identify barriers and identified these strategies that developers would use, but it's also hard to put it into play. And so I think this new paper, which kind of distills three dimensions of developer experience into feedback, cognitive load, and cognitive flow, these three dimensions are easier to wrap your head around and to identify how to measure them so that you can make changes and hopefully improve developer experience by focusing on those three things. So I know that some people probably listen to this episode like coming from a new perspective, right? They may not understand what is developer experience. I forget that we have mentioned developer experience so many times, but some people may not be familiar with it. Maybe if you can do a quick refresher, what is actually developer experience and is there anything changing after this new paper come out? The high level definition of developer experience that we use is it's a bit similar to the user experience concept that you get from human computer interaction or UX research. And it's all about how a developer feels about, thinks about and values their work. So it really does look at the cognitive perspective of the developer and these different sort of psychological aspects. And together, those aren't distinct, but together, those insights build a picture of the kind of experience that a developer has. And in particular, the values dimension is really important. And I mentioned this earlier, that our earlier work showed that developers, when they feel that their work has impact, they feel more satisfied, but they also feel more productive. And this is really important in terms of motivating them to do their best work. So developer experience really focuses on how the developer feels and thinks about and values the work. I know I'm repeating myself, but there really are these three pieces to it. And then this new paper kind of focuses on those three aspects and builds on them to see what are the things that we can measure. Because those are fuzzy, right? How do you value your work? How do you think about your work? It's hard to turn those into things that you could measure or even reason about how you could make improvements. So the three dimensions in this new paper is about really thinking about, okay, what is it we can really measure, understand, and then suggest changes for? Yeah, I loved Peggy's overview of the scientific perspective on developer experience, I can maybe speak a little bit to the layman's view of developer experience. Developer experience is a buzzword now, and I think it's used in a couple different contexts. So for one, to build on what Peggy said, developer experience is about the lived experiences of developers. And Peggy provided a sort of rooted in psychology, but a way of thinking about that, which we build on in this recent paper. Developer experience is also, I think, a practice now in the industry. It's an approach. And in the paper, we refer to it as a developer-centric approach to understanding and improving productivity. 
And you're seeing that play out in many different ways. There are now teams out there called DevX teams. Gartner recently ran a survey and found that over 90% of organizations are either have planned or are establishing DevX initiatives. And this goes beyond even what we're talking about today in terms of what developer experience is. Developer experience is something that is happening. Organizations are investing in and planning initiatives across the industry. Right. And the overarching goal why people start to invest a lot in developer experience, because I think it has been proven that productive developers definitely bring a lot of values to the company and in fact, ended up with increased business performance, either profit or whatever it is that you're doing as an organization. Peggy, you mentioned three core dimensions. Let's just go dive into those three. So you mentioned about feedback loops, cognitive load, and also flow state. So maybe, yeah, I can explain maybe one by one, uh, what is feedback loops and why this is important for us to think about measuring it? Yeah, so developers, how they work and the work that they do, they rely so much on feedback, whether it's getting feedback from the system or whether it's getting feedback from other developers, this is going to impact anytime you make a change in the code or you work on a feature, you need to get feedback that you're doing the right thing, right? That this is heading in the right direction, whether I'm waiting for somebody to review my code or waiting for tests to run or waiting to get feedback from end users. This is an important part of giving me that feedback that I'm on the right track, right? And so these the speed of these feedback loops, and this is what agile development was all about, was increasing that speed, right? So that you would get that feedback quickly and you would know that I'm understanding this correctly and getting the right value, seeing the right value from the work that I'm doing and I'm meeting other needs. And of course, CI and CD is all about that as well, speeding up the feedback that you get. So the feedback loops was the first kind of dimension that kind of emerged from using the DevX framework in the tooling that Abi and his colleagues created. And the second one is cognitive load. Sometimes this is also referred to cognitive fatigue. So this is the amount of mental processing that is required for a developer to perform a task. And of course, software development today is a very challenging cognitive task to do. You have to understand a lot of things. A lot of your work is understanding not just the code that you're working on, but also all of the code that your piece of software depends on. And there can be many different layers of abstractions, not to mention all of the tooling that you're using and all of the other things that people in your team are working on. Some cognitive load is good. We feel happy when we have some pressure on us, but if there's too much, then you feel overwhelmed or you get confused and you forget. So this is the second one that's really, really important. And then the third one is this notion of cognitive flow, which I've been looking at for actually over 20 years now, this idea of supporting developers getting in flow. And often people think, oh, that just refers to not being interrupted. But being in flow is a lot more than that, that feeling of being in control of what you're working on something at the right level of difficulty, feeling like you're making progress, feeling like you're creating something that's worthwhile. That kind of captures that whole kind of flow notion. And that can be supported by many things, such as having autonomy over your work or having clear goals, as well as having that uninterrupted time to do that. So together, these three things, they're not independent. They are dependent, right? If you make a change that impacts one of them, that's going to impact the other two. So together, we feel these are the three most important kind of ways that we can make improvements to developer experience. One thing I would add to what Peggy described is going back to an earlier theme of both social and technical factors spanning across these three different dimensions. For example, if you think of feedback loops, again, most people think of feedback loops in terms of the speed of tools or the speed of processes. But in fact, a lot of those tools and processes involve human aspects as well. For example, in our paper, we provide examples of feedback loops and tools, but we also talk about the feedback loops which exist amongst people. One obvious example would be waiting on peers for feedback on code for code reviews. But those types of feedback loops exist outside of code review as well. There's usually feedback loops involved in QA, feedback loops involved in getting feedback from your actual users and customers or stakeholders. So that's something I wanted to call out. And the same applies for cognitive load and flow state as well. Again, with cognitive load, we like to think of developers scattered across too many tools and systems. But in fact, a lot of cognitive load has to do with communication between people or communication between people via code that is difficult to work in. 
And as Peggy talked about at the end, flow state is the same thing. It's not just around the sort of mechanical aspect of people being interrupted. It's also about them feeling stimulated and fulfilled and empowered in their roles. Those are all key components that promote a state of flow state in developers.